Gynocentrism refers to a dominant or exclusive focus on women in theory or practice, or to the advocacy of this. Anything can be considered gynocentric when it is concerned exclusively with a female or feminist point of view. History The term gynocentrism has been in use since at least 1897 when it appeared in the open court stating that continental Europeans view Americans as suffering rather from gynocentrism than anthropocentrism. In 1914, author George A. Birmingham stated that, "...American social life seems to me gynocentric. It is arranged with a view to the convenience and delight of women. Men come in where and how they can." Beginning with second-wave feminism in the 1970s, the term gynocentrism has been used to describe difference feminism, which displayed a shift towards understanding and accepting gender differences, in contrast to equality feminism. According to University of Massachusetts philosopher Krista Hodip, in modern men's movements gynocentrism is described as a continuation of the courtly love conventions of medieval times, wherein women were valued as a quasi-aristocratic class, and males were seen as a lower-serving class. This antifeminist viewpoint describes feminism as the perpetuation of oppressive medieval conventions such as devotional chivalry and romanticized relationships, rather than as a movement towards liberation. Religious studies professors Paul Nathanson and Catherine K. Young claim that feminist calls for equality or equity are a subterfuge for gynocentrism. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> The term gynocentrism is derived from ancient Greek, gyne and kontron. Gyne can be translated as woman or female, but also as wife. In ancient Greek compounds with gyne, the stem gynaeic is normally used. This stem can be spotted in the genitive case gynaeikos, and in the older form of the nominative case gynaeix. In ancient Greek, no compounds are known to exist with gyne that start with gyno or gyno. The ancient Greek word kontron can be translated as sharp point, sting of bees and wasps, point of a spear and stationary point of a pair of compasses, with the meaning center of a circle related to the latter. The meaning center, middle point of a circle is preserved in the Latin word centrum, a loanword from ancient Greek. The English word center is derived from the Latin centrum. The word kontron is derived from the verb kentine, meaning to sting of bees, to prick, to goad, and to spur. When trying to explain etymologically the term gynocentrism, it is important to consider the ancient Greek kontron, with the signification middle point, center, and not the more obvious ancient Greek word kentrismos mirroring centrism. Criticism <coughs> 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 Nathanson and Young state that ideologically, the overriding focus of gynocentrism is to prioritize females hierarchically, and as a result may be interpreted as misandry, hatred of and prejudice towards men. Feminist calls for equality or even equity are often, according to them, a subterfuge for gynocentrism. They define gynocentrism as a worldview based on the implicit or explicit belief that the world revolves around women, a cultural theme that they claim has become de rigueur behind the scenes in law courts and government bureaucracies, resulting in systemic discrimination against men. They further state that gynocentrism is a form of essentialism, as distinct from scholarship or political activity on behalf of women to the extent that it focuses on the innate virtues of women and the innate vices of men. Some authors make discriminations between individual gynocentric acts and events, such as Mother's Day, and the more general concept of a gynocentric culture which refers to a larger collection of culture traits that have major significance in the way people's lives were lived. Some postmodern feminists such as Nancy Fraser question the assumption of a stable concept of woman which underlies all gynocentrism. Nathanson and Young make a comparable claim that gynocentrism is a form of essentialism as distinct from scholarship or political activity on behalf of women, to the extent that it focuses on the innate virtues of women. Nathanson and Young add that, "...this worldview is explicitly misandric too, because it not only ignores the needs and problems of men, but also attacks men." Christina Hoff Summers has argued that gynocentrism is anti-intellectual and holds an antagonistic view of traditional scientific and creative disciplines, dismissing many important discoveries and artistic works as masculine. Summers also writes that the presumption of objectivity ascribed to many gynocentrist theories has stifled feminist discourse and interpretation. Feminist writer Linda Burns emphasizes that gynocentrism calls for a celebration of women's positive differences of women's history, myths, arts and music 
as opposed to an assimilationist model privileging similarity to men. However observed in practice, the preeminence of women associated with gynocentric narratives is often seen as absolute, interpersonally, culturally, historically, politically, or in broader social contexts such as popular entertainment. As such, it can shade into what Rosalind Coward called, "...womanism a sort of popularized version of feminism which acclaims everything women do and disparages men." The men going their own way community describes themselves as a backlash against the misandry of gynocentrism. See also Androcentrism Gynocriticism Red Tent Meetings References External links Iris M. Young, Humanism, Gynocentrism and Feminist Politics Gynocentrism and its Cultural Origins Gynocentric Eco-Logics International Academy Haya, Matriarchy